Hello and welcome back to JP Gaming and to KSP and our super duper trooper hard extreme mode. I can't remember. I, I can never remember exactly what I call this. <laughs> but it's an extreme mode where we're trying to unlock the whole tech tree using only 10% science gain. And also, of course, last time I did spice it up a little bit extra with actually increasing the re-entry heating to 120%, which is the highest you can get. And in today's episode, we are going for a Juno mission once again, but this time we're actually returning as well. I'm not going for a landing on Juna though. I am just going for a flyby of Juna and a flyby of Ike. So we can get as much science as possible from those. And um, yeah, because I, I didn't really want to go for a landing because I didn't feel like we really had the technology to do that. And uh, yeah. As you can see, we now flew this up and I got into orbit and that's about when I realized I forgot to put on an antenna, so I had to go back and put that on. But now at least we, we tested it out and made sure that this little rocket worked. It is very, very simple and very like, um, how would you say that? It's like taking a step back was kind of how I felt when I was building this like don't put any unnecessary things on here don't try and make it look very nice and um, I was just trying to make it functional which kind of hurts sometimes but <laughs> it is it is what it is uh, especially now that we have the very low tiers of technology and we're still trying to go pretty far with this thing uh, I mean going to Juno is not like unheard of um, but doing a return mission when you're at this stage at least for me is quite different and yeah now we got this into orbits of Kerbin and of course extending that antenna that we now have I had to do some time warping and uh, I think no I no I don't think I actually used the uh, time mod thingy what is it called better time warp mod i think that's what it's called uh which is a mod that i really like i use it all the time uh it basically helps with the time warp and make it makes it a little bit better so you can increase it you can soften it and that goes both for the normal time warp and the physical time warp as well and the physical time warp is really where that mods uh, comes to shine in my opinion and yes now we made our maneuver so we're going over to Juna and the maneuver was pretty easy we have loads of fuel left so I felt pretty comfortable uh, making some mid-course corrections and stuff and I also made a couple of mistakes I think I think I'm gonna be making some mistakes soon here I can't actually remember exactly what is about to happen because I, I did this edit and this recording before Christmas and now it's after Christmas <laughs> and after New Year's as well. And uh, yeah, it's just, I've just been busy within those days. So of course I had to put this on hold, but yes, making a little bit of a mid-course correction and that actually went well. I can't really say, I think we're at like 114 kilometers or something like that above Juna. Uh, which is fine. The atmosphere, of course, starts at 50 kilometers above the surface on Juna. So we're fine there. But I am gonna just even this out a little bit so we get on the same plane as Ike. So we get as equatorial as possible. Because, of course, uh, like I said before, we are gonna try and go for a flyby of Ike as well. So we do need to get captured here. Can't just keep on going. So I actually went into the atmosphere quite far, not really, really far, but quite far still. And uh, made some science experiments there, of course, which is something that I tend to forget to do <laughs> in a lot of places. It's, it's so easy when you need to do an experiment like three or four times during just one descent towards a planet. It's very easy to just forget and... Um, to do it once or twice 
within that because it's not only one experiment of course there are like four or three experiments i have to do a couple of times at least the two uh the thermometer and the thermometer yeah the pressure thingy have to do that like four times both of those so yeah it's not it's not uncommon to forget that sometimes and now we're just adjusting our orbit a little bit uh, we're going in to the atmosphere once more to slow down a little bit extra and of course doing even more science experiments here um, doing the ones that i forgot the last time we passed around and of course yeah Juno's atmosphere is uh, as us uh, more experienced <laughs> players know Juno's as atmosphere is very thin so uh, it's no problem going in quite deep to slow down and now we got a good orbit here which is uh, intersecting Ike's orbit so I thought this was gonna be fine so uh, oh yeah here we came into a little bit of a problem when now I was trying to increase my orbit a little bit I noticed that I didn't have any connection and it was because I didn't have any electricity but one of the solar panels did actually have a little bit of sun coming onto it so I was able to make this work anyways I don't really know how I got this to work but I was just fanoodling around back and forth a whole lot and got it to work and then yeah as you could see there after a while I, I kind of got it to move but then I felt like okay I know I can do this now but it's just gonna take so much extra time so I decided to just open up the cheat menu get the electricity and just move it um because like I said I, I, I could have done it the normal way but I just decided not to because well like I said saving time and yes now we're going for a bit of an Ike um uh, flyby as well and I decided to actually go into an orbit of Ike so we could get science from both high above Ike and from near Ike and also um, so I could do my transfer burn back to Kerbin from Ike as well and of course there are better ways of doing this as well I am not the best KSP player not at all uh, I tend to brute force things more than actually like carefully uh calculating stuff and yeah now i actually used the uh better time warp mod there to time warp a little bit faster around the system and as you can see here uh like i said i'm more of the brute force type of guy so i just brute forced uh that encounter but it didn't cost us too much delta v and we had even more to spare so i thought why not we don't need to do careful calculations so why do careful calculations and we got this wonderful uh juna rise over ike which was uh yeah really beautiful took a screenshot of that might be using that as a thumbnail actually well you guys will know that but i don't know that right now i think i'll do that anyhow uh going back here now just doing some small mid-course corrections and uh, I had to yeah focus in on Kerbin itself to do this which is something I don't really like to do I like to do my mid-course corrections from the focus of the craft itself uh, I've never gotten the mechanic to work for some reason where you press like back space or redact or whatever that is called <laughs> the backspace basically and you go back to focus on your craft that hasn't really worked for me i don't know why it's weird but anyways we're getting back to Kerber now and of course we do have a heat shield on this craft so i thought why not why just not go for uh, a landing instantly and as you can see my trajectory mod is saying that I would go through the atmosphere but of course when we decouple we become a lot lighter and that is gonna make us slow down a lot faster so we are gonna get captured and also land within this flyby through the atmosphere and yeah no no overheating or anything everything worked we got back we landed 
and we didn't actually get enough science to even unlock anything this time. I think we got 74 science or something like that in total. Uh, yeah, 74. So couldn't unlock anything this time, which sucked. But it was a good mission anyways. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this. Uh, next time we might be venturing out even further into the universe. But I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.